This is Chef Culture. I'm Courtney Kaysen, and this is a podcast dedicated to the exploration of the obsession and celebration of all things shopping. Joining us on Shop Culture today is a woman that prefers the finer things in life. And on any given Sunday when she's rocking Chanel, Valentino, or her favorite Dior, you can catch her on QVC selling her award-winning fragrances. This is Toga Borknine. How are you, lady? I'm actually um, feeling glorious in 2019, let's face it. So many years ago, I was young, but I still feel it. Oh my gosh, you still look young. Like when I grow up, I want to be to have a board night. <laughs> Bless you. You have a cup of coffee sitting in front of you. So we have a great calf here at QVC. What kind of coffee did you get? What kind of coffee? Mm-hmm. Um, well, obviously we're using Starbucks as far as here. But as far as what coffee, I would say my favorite is in uh, Italy, in Milan, at a place of right by the Excelsior, where you have the best um, espresso. In yeah, the world. you're an espresso drinker. Yeah, are you just like one one cup a day? Would you say are you? Two I would one, I would be at this point one cup a day. One at cup. that time I was three. <sighs> just living. But it's hey, energized, tall, yeah. thin, <laughs> drinking that espresso. Love that. So you have like a really obviously interesting story because you've started in this world of of beauty. You're a makeup artist by sheer blessing and talent, I think, which is awesome. And in today's world, it seems like women spend more money than ever on beauty. I we live say, in a world where you can spend $100 for a lipstick. I Well, that I think was also back in the day. But the, the find, what I find is that most women have – an issue of I don't know whether I'm really on the blue side or the the peach side, and so the experimentation is going. But as far as beauty, in uh, everyone is constantly experimenting mm-hmm. on something that I feel um, less is more many sure. times, and so that. There are staples that I used back in the 80s, as I do today, um, because, well, I feel they go with my complexion, with my skin tone and so forth. But experimentation, by all means, constantly do it. Well, but let's, so let's talk about this, this world of beauty really quick, because that's how we spend a lot of our time shopping, I think, as women, like of any age, of any caliber. And... I have to ask, like, what's the most you've ever spent on a beauty product? You are, by all means, the definition of what I would call classic beauty, iconic beauty. You have a very specific look. You have incredible taste. What's the most you've ever spent on a beauty product? $550. What was it? Perfume. Okay. Very, but, like, anything cosmetics-wise? Well, in cosmetics, I would say the highest I have ever... Because remember, I came from the industry. Yeah. So therefore, in knowing the industry, it's where uh, the price point isn't necessarily the key. Yeah. It's a matter of taking on what literally works for you. It's the feel, the touch, the sense of when you apply it, if you're testing it at one of the stores and so on. But ultimately, I would say that... an uh, cosmetically, I was always privileged of working behind the scene. Yeah. So therefore, I wouldn't say the highest thing that I would look at is a – well, there's one exception to this rule. Yves Saint Laurent did incredible packaging of whether it was uh, in the quads for the uh, eye makeup, uh, the brushes. I still have their uh, – um, which is really going back, but their um, iconic uh, um, pencil sharpener. Yeah. And, and literally those are things that were keys to me. And now we have a plethora of every kind of possibility, but I always go back to the classics. I just am a classic. I, th- I totally agree. Uh, and you know, it's funny, like when, if you haven't met Tova Borgnine, first of all, you have to go- Google her. I mean, you are one of the most stunning individuals uh-huh. I think I've ever met, but I think you have even 
better taste, which is what's so exciting because it's not just taste for the amazing suits that you wear or how you wear your hair. Like even the photos of like the inside of your house, like the pieces of art that you have, you have top notch taste. And so in your house right now, what are you most proud of that you've curated oh, for your collection? Well, the one that is my, let's say, um, extravagance. Yes. Uh, I have a uh, set of what is called Floridonica China. Uh, Floridonica is part of Royal Copenhagen, and each plate was done originally for um, the first king of Denmark, and then eventually and so forth. It is no longer, unfortunately, being done, but each plate is all of the botanicals. And right now, the um, dinner plate, if you can find it, because they don't make it anymore, uh, is over $1,500 a plate. And what are you, do you use this plate? Yeah, I do. You do? What do you serve on it? I, well, actually, I have somebody serve. Even better. <laughs> Even better, Toby. No, in other words, I <laughs> told my husband when we first got married, and I said, in that room, and he said, what do you mean, room? I said, that room. And he said, that's a kitchen. It's not a room. I said, well, could we make a den out of that? Because I don't do that room I'm at all. I'm not in there. <laughs> Thanks so much. So uh, um, for me, yes, it, it, each of these pieces uh, uh, has a meaning to me. Well, how did you know you wanted it? Well, because, um, number one, I was born in Norway, mm -hmm. and um, being connected, obviously, to Denmark and so forth, and I was, as a child, sort of brought up to appreciate those things, and um, it wasn't until we were married about uh, five years where I finally got my first piece, and then it's been a collection over many, many, many years. Now, was that something at the time you had to explain to Ernie? Like, sweetheart, is this a no, really important it, investment to me? the fascinating thing with Ernie, as though he, you know, he pay, played uh, um, so many heavies in movies, but he was a raconteur. He was definitely, um, he was great to shop with. Because really? he literally uh, knew a lot about a lot of things, but was also... Uh, a great believer in antiquity, so that when we traveled, we would always uh, go to fascinating places. He was definitely from the museum and so forth, and fortunately an extraordinarily generous gentleman over the years for jewelry. Well, we love that. Yeah. Well, let's, let's go back to how you met Ernie. Yeah. Oh. All right, so now we're going back even further than 82, um, was, we love a throwback. Yeah, I love a throwback. Yeah, but well, it's long before anybody in this room was born. <laughs> That's really <laughs> discouraging. But anyway, so now in 1972, I had um, relocated from New Jersey to Las Vegas. I had two concessions going on, uh, both at the Caesar's Palace and also the um, Hilton Internet, well, the International Hotel at the time, for makeup. And I had done a lot of the headliners there, and from that, um, <laughs> Marty Allen, who is a comedian, and his wife Frenchie, said, what is a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? And they sort of took me under their arm. Then Frenchie called me and said, look, we are having uh, Marty's birthday party at Chasen's in Los Angeles. We'd like to invite you, but don't bring a date because we have one. And I said, great. He said, don't you want to know who it is? And I said, sure, who? And they said, Ernest Borgnine. I said, oh, the actor. <laughs> anyway. So we sat down at Chasen's. He brought me back to the Beverly Wilshire Hotel where I was staying. And at that time, they had elevator operators. So, you know, in other words, they were ready to close the doors. I'm smiling broadly to him going, you know, 
hello, you could kiss me goodnight, something like that. You could, yeah. Like, I thought tonight went really well. And the elevator operator was trying to close the door. So now, looking at Ernie directly, I put my foot, heel, on her foot slightly, like, lady, if you close this door, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. (laughs) And subsequently, Ernie went... Oh, by the way, I'm coming to Las Vegas, Jimmy Durante's 50th anniversary, would you, by the time he said, would you, I said, yes. <laughs> okay, so the, the attraction was instant. It was there. And then our second date um, was actually when Jimmy Durante and my dear friend Lou Beard, and she was married to Dale Robertson at the time, cowboy actor, great actor, And she was my first friend, and to this day, she is my dear friend. That's wonderful. And that was the beginning of an incredible 40 years of love, incredible experiences, Um, literally being picked up on a magic carpet and taken around the world. Well, when you talk about your love story with Ernie, it's all, it's always so vivid. And you talk about the places that you travel and the experiences. I mean, obviously the basis for a lot of perfumes <laughs> that you've created over the years have been a singular incident. Like, I mean, I think about like Tova Knights and, um, if you don't know Tova, she's obviously a VP award winner, um, which is like the Academy Awards of fragrance, right. which is amazing. But you talk about this one night in Paris with Ernie. In Paris, in Monaco, actually, but in, uh, yes, we've done Paris, too. I mean, the first time in Paris, by the way, uh, which was in the early part of our marriage, um, going down the Champs-Élysées, and I can close my eyes and see this, and Ernie and um, uh, had made a film called Emperor of the North, and this was a billboard that was the biggest that I had seen at that time, announcing that the premiere was coming to Paris. And that was my first trip to Paris. Did you just, were you like, sweetie, I'll see you later? Like, I just need to absorb all this shopping goodness? Like, what what was that like? It was, well, you know, when, when you have a dream, and a dream of where everything sparkles, and it's like you're being carried away I, a la Cinderella. Yes. Uh, it literally felt like that. And it was constantly, and some parts it was overwhelming. But at the same time, when I think back, the memory of it, the sense of it, I can literally transpose myself because I've been very blessed to have such amazing experiences. But hopefully I try and share it in some form or fashion yeah. in what I do today. What was your favorite thing that you purchased from that trip? Because I'm sure you got something well, among the... Well, it was the... going into Dior. Yeah. And uh, literally uh, first buying a, an incredible purse. And then later Ernie said, you should really see if you could get a whole costume. And I didn't say no. You I rose mean, to I the know. occasion. I did. He challenged yeah. you. You yeah. accepted. And then what did you What did you get? What did your ensemble look like? Uh, it's actually is a suit that I believe I still have in my closet. And it was um, a light and a little, small, tiny polka dot. Do you think with the idea of beautiful things, like I'm sitting here looking at just a a baby doll of a Birkin, (laughs) do you think that over the years you are glad you made those investments? Obviously, you and Ernie had the money to do it. You worked hard. You're playing hard. Have they lived up to your expectations? In every way. What I truly feel is very important going into now almost 2020 is that we reintroduce the quality of craftsmanship. Yeah. The artisans, before they leave our existence completely. Um, They are artists... And going back to the 1982, the catalog, all of those artisans that we worked with, unfortunately, may be extinct in the next 10 years. Right. Because they don't have the next generation going for it. Do you feel like you go out now with your shopping habits and seek those artisans rather than order from convenience? 
I definitely uh, seek them out in every way. There's a designer that I've used for many years who <coughs> happens to be in the Palm, De Palm Desert in California, um, which is Palm Springs for yeah. those people. And her name is Faye Zondi. Uh, she's originally from Iran. She studied under Bauman in Paris. Oh, wow. Uh, and she has still the art of being able to not only design, but the craftsmanship of that. Yeah. And that, unfortunately, is another dying art. Right. And um, I wouldn't say they're one of a kind, but literally the craftsmanship on them is something that you can put away and come back, and they never go out of style. You and Ernie were together for 40 years. How long were you guys married for? Pretty close to that, right? We were married 39. We knew each other 40. 40. Was there ever a time where the credit card bill comes or there's a delivery to the <laughs> house where Ernie was like... You had to bring up something really bad. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. want to know, like, what offended Ernie the most out of your, your shopping? Interestingly, not the big things. It was the little things. In other words, it's like, what do you need 12 pair of hose for? <laughs> <laughs> that is shocking. I mean, it was it was the classic sense of number one. He c never understood why I couldn't do that room, the kitchen. Right. So one day I did, by the way, give him a whole meal. What'd you cook? A uh, leg of lamb. I I had the joy of cooking the books. Uh -huh. There's one and two. Uh huh. Uh, and. I leg of lamb, but I had the wonderful store in Beverly Hills where you could sort of call it in, mm -hmm. and they delivered everything, and then I had what to do with it. So it was leg of lamb, uh, broccoli, blah, 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 blah. And we had, uh, by that time, we had a wonderful uh, design of the kitchen that could be sort of in a magazine, uh, but tile floor. I presented everything in our gorgeous dining room mm -hmm. and said, now you just sit there, don't worry about me. And I got, the problem I had was I couldn't get everything out on the same time. Oh, doesn't every home yes, come. I mean, <laughs> that's the problem. Your <laughs> broccoli's only four minutes, the like of lamb and so and so. Anyway, got that done. And I said, now honey, I have the coffee, everything is set. I will take the dishes out. He kept saying, no, I'll do it, I'll do it. It's just the two of us with candlelight and yeah. music and the whole thing. Naturally, um, crystal champagne, etc. And I take our dishes. Now, remember, we were talking about that with Flora Donica. These happened to be Heron China, and I was taking them back. Somehow some grease had come on the floor from the <gasps> oven, and I went sliding, and the only thing I was like, oh, my God, these dishes. <laughs> With that, uh, and they cracked, and I went. But I, one of the pieces ended up in my Insta. Oh. Which, by the way, in case you never knew, that is the worst place to uh, bleed because it's like having an oil gusher going. Oh, too And bad. Ernie is coming and running, and he said, oh, my God, what are you, well, never again will you be in this kitchen. <laughs> You're like, that's, that's what it took for you to be like, don't worry about it. It's not your now jam. No, I never had to worry about it. Well, that sounds kind of great. But I had 11 stitches. <laughs> How about that leg of lamb? <laughs> 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 okay, so... All right, in your house now, I assume that you have a kitchen. So like yes. when you have girlfriends over, when you throw a get-together, are you hiring people out to like make the menu? Well, of course, I have my uh, right hand, left hand, Linda. Yes. Who is very, very accommodating in the kitchen. <laughs> and we also do have a caterer. Yeah. Now and then. But I do, I set a wonderful table. And I certainly do the ambiance. It's just that I don't do the rest of it. That's fine. Yeah. You don't need to. Yeah. You're here for the rest of it. Right. And I'm here for it, <laughs> living and thriving. You have told me about a picture that is in your, in your basement that is of you, and it's a beautiful painting. How did that come to fruition? Which one? The one where you 
Your, your body is on display well, and fabulous. let me clear that up a little. I wish it were me. Wait, what? No. Tell me everything. It's Marilyn Monroe. What? It is Marilyn Monroe, and it's one of only 300, uh, what is it, about uh, 20 by 40, whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> Sits over my bar, which, of course, is appropriate. Sure. And it's her in her nude <gasps> going like this. It's very, it's an iconic um, photograph. And when people come in, and of course they pass that and go, yes, and I keep saying, yes, it's me. But it's not. It is Marilyn. I confess. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I do say myself, your body rivals Marilyn any day. Oh. So I will, I will take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> now, one time you told me a story about something that you purchased, and I want to say it was... You'll have to excuse my redneck description of it, but I think it was like a candle holder something where you closed your eyes and signed the receipt, and you're like, I have never regretted it. What was that? Well, there were a couple of things in my lifetime that I did that one. One, uh, there, um, La Lique, that um, we all may know. I mean, it's one of the best glass designers of our um, life uh, out of France, and they did 99 um, issues of the Lalique Angel, which stood approximately four feet high, mm -hmm. and it was in London, and it was number 99, and of course, I have a pension for nines, Borg nine, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Um, Ernie's license plate was Ernie 9, yeah, you know, so forth and so on, which was, again, back to the beginning of all of this. Um, hopefully at another time, we'll tell the story of the beginning of the company. But I was in London. I had been doing, uh, just started QBC UK, and I passed the store, and I said, I can't, and I went back and forth. It was over... $30,000 or pounds. What am I saying? Oh, God. So it's like $60,000. And so, and at that time it was 50. <laughs> and I signed my name <laughs> and I went, either I'm divorced <laughs> or I'm out of business. <laughs> uh, and it literally was um, something that I loved. And I, at that time, I actually opened. Our office is in New York, which was at the International Building at Rock Center. Yeah. With Atlas in the front. And it stood there. Proudly. Just Proudly. watching over the place. Yeah. Good vibes from the moment that exactly. you enter. So, obviously, like, with, with your business and your salons and making incredible beauty products, I mean, for most of your career, at what point in your career... Did you decide, you know what, these extravagances, I earn every penny, the experience is worth every penny? Because I think sometimes that a lot of times we fight so hard for success, we tend to savor the things sometimes and not always reward ourselves immediately. So where were you in that point of your life where you were like, it's time to live a little? Well, I, I all, overall, I believe I have lived each of the moments proudly. Yeah. Um, but I have also had the in, uh, incentive, yes, but the um, grounding, not only of Ernie, but especially of my mother. And that is that, in other words, do not ever live beyond your means yeah. because it will come and kick you. Uh, so... Um, when times have been tough, like anything in life, you have the big times, and then you have the other, and how to uh, get through that. Yeah. Um, and so, fortunately, the one thing I've always done is make sure that if I'm going to do something extravagant, yeah. that I have the ability to do it without uh, jeopardizing any of uh, my life. 
What's next on the extravagances list? <laughs> well, right now, I am extremely comfortable. I love the area I'm in. Mm -hmm. I love that I still get to travel. Yeah. I love my business in the sense of uh, truly uh, wanting women, all women, to believe in themselves, to have the ability of even as not necessarily as outrageous as I did and standing in San Marco Square and saying, let's go shopping. Yeah. And not really knowing at that time. But to really get on with, you know, we women have strengths that we haven't even started. And um, whatever I can leave is that hopefully the legacy of be yourself and be proud of it. But I also feel like in meeting you and knowing you, and even from somebody that may just see you on TV, you also inspire to be the most fabulous version of yourself. I think when people watch you and they're around you, like I feel like I sit up straighter. I'm like, Tova's here. I've got to like make sure that like my collar is ironed. <laughs> like I just, I think that you have a way about you of inspiring that. And for me, like I'm always that grateful. And for me, I think a lot of times when I see you and you talk about those outfits that you still have from Paris and your Champs Elysees right. experience at Dior. It makes me remember that like even when I'm out shopping, like yes, something may be expensive, but like if I'm gonna have that for a lifetime and take the moment to appreciate the qualities that went in it, I feel like you are an everyday reminder of that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I wanna talk about life post Ernie for a second because yeah. you have this amazing love story that you shared for forty years. Are you dating? Do you wanna date? Well, What's life uh, like that? Yes, I am sort of I I'm dating. Uh, I um, have a friend who is a retired doctor, yeah, uh, head of radiology at Lackanau, for that matter, a wonderful human being, yeah, uh, inspiring in so many ways, and great art collector. We have so much in common in the sense of um, legacies, and yes, he's older than me, so therefore we obviously understand the same general things. But he also, fortunately, has that little out-of-the-box feeling. Um, uh, he's into art, as I said, but also in automobiles. Uh -huh. So uh, one day, uh, he was driving the top auto, auto. I'm not necessarily the most, um, in other words, the top Audi car is not necessarily my number. I don't know. But he, in other words, the sports car personified. And then one day, he literally took himself to the Bentley people oh. in New Jersey. Yes. We won't leave their names, but whatever. And he just bought uh, one of the first Bentley SUVs. Oh. <laughs> now, getting into that is like driving your living room. <laughs> Do tell. <laughs> so, I mean, when you think about it, it first of all, you say Bentley or Rolls Royce. But, I mean, in other words, you those were two sort of iconic. I've had two Rolls Royces and one Bentley in my life. Loved each of them. But an SUV of a Bentley is like experiencing literally driving your most posh living room in the whole world. Everything moves. The Conley leather is like, you know, breathing in and breathing out. The appointments, nothing has been left for any kind of, you know, I wish they'd added this. No, 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 no. Sure. It's there. So does he just pick you up in, yes. in Bentley SUV and squire you about town? Exactly. Where was your last date in this car? Well, actually, he's very involved with the Curtis Institute. And for those of you who don't know, Curtis Institute is the best, mus one of the best in the world of musical um, for young people. Uh, are you know out of two thousand five are chosen, and so subsequently, we have one young violinist, Angela, that he's sort of mentoring. Uh, she's been there since she was 16. She's 21 now. She's won every award in the world. She's in New Zealand at the moment. 
So we do a lot of that in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. He belongs to the Philadelphia Club, which is the oldest club. Oh, in... where Grace Kelly got engaged. You beg your pardon? Is that where Grace Kelly got engaged? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I know exactly. it. So, you know, we uh, keep that. Now, if I may, when it comes to who Tova Borg 9 is attracted to, you have exquisite taste in men. Like, yeah. I mean, this guy is checking, like, the resume that you just listed, you're like, he sounds like an 11 out of 10. Yeah. Did you think that it was, like, honestly, for the way that you've lived your life and the caliber of not only just your life with Ernie, but, like, so deservingly what you worked hard for, was it hard to find an equal match when it came to a new person that you spend lots of quality time with your life in? Well, I first of all, I don't think you can go looking for it. Uh, in other words, okay. So, how did you meet him then? Well, it was a, it was an introduction through a dear friend of mine, a neighbor of mine, uh, who had known him and thought that it could possibly be a match, and so it worked. But in other words, in in my obviously uh, my career, my life with Ernie, it literally was where I did get to. Dance with Fred Astaire. Um, dance with the King of Norway. Uh, Who's the better dancer, by the way? The Fred. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Hands down. <laughs> However, the King wasn't bad. He's okay. Uh, but then also at the White House with uh, President Ronald Reagan, where he actually stated to me in the receiving line, and it's a whole other process, but he came close to me and said, this was my mask day. It's a whole other story. Wait, wait excuse me? Mask day? Do tell. Well, <clears throat> I founded the company, you know, on a cactus yeah. extract. And the iconic part of that was a mask. And we had been invited to the White House for state dinners four times in a row where Ernie was working in a different location. And I said to him on the fifth one, I said, I don't care if you're on the moon. We are going to this dinner. And so we got there. And I had, of course, preceded this with apologies, please rain checks, you know, what you, to Nancy and uh, President Reagan. And then uh, I, of course, sent more. And <clears throat> when in the receiving line, when Ronald, President Reagan leaned to me, he was referring to my mask. Oh, that's amazing. Did I part so. of you just want to graze his cheek and be like, I can tell. But I have a picture. You do? With <sighs> him, but not necessarily. Well, you can't hear it. It's a photo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, touche. And so you get to dance with President Reagan. At the White House. No, no. 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 It was the King of Norway. Oh, excuse me. And Fred Astaire. Gotcha. I never got to dance with President Reagan, but I definitely had. Well, that just seems And I rude. also have a letter from, the, from President Reagan. That is so incredible. Yeah. That's just like got to be the kind of moment where you just pinch yourself. Like, it, totally. And it also, um, you know, in other words... The process, though, depending on whether you are uh, fortunate enough in, in my uh, process of meeting the presidents and kings and so forth, or whoever you admire, the point is to um, relish it, yes, but also appreciate that you have been given that opportunity. So do you think with that list of accolades, experiences, on the dating resume, do you think that that was intimidating to potential suitors looking back now, um, even I, though you have actually, a boyfriend? Uh, I, I have never thought about that side. I mean, I, I am, sec well, I'm secure. I feel positive about me. Yeah. I'm at that stage of my life where, um, yes, I have things to accomplish. But I, I don't necessarily need, and I underline need, anything. That's awesome. 
All right. So we will wrap this podcast up with one quick thing, because one of the things that I feel like you inspire women to do the most, regardless of their budget or, or where they are in life, is to really be their best and their most extravagant and fabulous self. What advice do you give to women to continue doing that? Like, what's something that we can focus on every day that reminds us that we are the center of our own universe? First of all, you have to, what I call is pause, shift, and center. And in doing that is to literally look in the mirror with a no makeup or with makeup. It is not imperative. And to say, I love me. And in doing so, it may be difficult the first time and a little bit less the second. But by the time you truly get that into your head, I love me, the sense of accomplishment that you can do, and again, the one thing about our country no matter how, uh, in whatever process politically it is, it is the greatest country in the world. And every woman, especially now, should and have to take charge of their own life. And in doing that, they will embellish and also encourage themselves to give more and have more and so forth to be good, feel good within this area of your being. And if I can encourage that, I think I will have accomplished something. Well, and by doing that, I must ask this. When you get to that point and you want to reward yourself and you want that specific item to be a representation of who you feel like you've become and what you've worked so hard for, what do you spend the money on? Is it a bag? Is it a great suit? Is it shoes, jewelry? I think the, the uh, rest of my life now, it will be sharing predominantly. And that's whether it's sharing a glass of sh crystal. In other words, one thing I always feel, if you're going to have champagne or if you're going to have a piece of jewelry, do the best that you can. And then you won't go back to the other, I promise you. <laughs> Words to live by with Tova Borgnine. Thank you so much. Thank you, Courtney. If you like this podcast, check out my other podcast with my beauty bestie, Elise Ivy, Basic Beauty, where we break down the world of beauty week by week. We talk trends, our favorite celebrity crushes, and of course, you get a sneak peek at what's going on in our lives.